opening up through Romans uh, 8, if you have a Bible or your iPads, whatever, uh, start in Romans 8, we're going to go through 1 all the way to about 39. Uh, I'm going to be jumping around just a little bit, as I said, it's going to be kind of a different message. But um, and I did some posts um, about the last couple weeks, um, and I'll be jumping in at us a bit about kind of what happened. But basically, uh, a couple weeks ago on Tuesday, I went to the, to the hospital, I basically said, you know... There's something going on, but I've been seeing a, a cardiologist for a while, and uh, they did an angiogram, and I had two steps put in my heart. And uh, in about two more weeks, I'll go back, two more weeks, I'll go back for another one, which is fine. Um, I really feel like God's doing something. He's clearing stuff up. He's making sure that I'm nice and healthy. Uh, but in the next three, four months, I'll be going through some stuff. So I might be in and out of church here and there, um, but... I've got such a great team, I just thank everybody. For, I feel like I, I missed one week, but I feel like I missed months, weeks. It was weird. I missed one week, but I'm not used to just sitting around doing nothing. It was really strange. We got the fan brigade over here. I turned on the air, you guys, okay? So, it'll be okay. I just look this way. So, I feel like I'm on a boat and we're just kind of rough. I'm getting seasick up here. But, it's okay, I just look that way. But, um, look, I, I know we're all going through stuff. There's a lot of things going on, good, bad, in between. And the, the thing about life is, um, I remember, you guys ever seen that old movie, Parenthood with Steve Martin? Yeah. And his grandmother is describing, they're complaining about life, and the husband and wife are kind of fighting, and, and uh, the husband's saying, oh, everything's so horrible, and the wife is saying, no, it's not that bad, you have to look at the good stuff. And, and the grandmother, who supposedly was, you know, struggling with memory and stuff, suddenly just says this, you know... When I was a kid, I used to go uh, to the amusement park, and some kids wanted to go on the merry-go-round, and I wanted to go on the roller coaster. It looks up, and you're scared, it goes down, and it's exciting, and then you get scared again. And, and some people just want to stay on this little roller coaster, with round and round, but not me. I just wanted to, to just experience everything. And uh, that's kind of what life is, right? Yes. You just experience everything, the highs, the lows, the in-betweens. And I... I've heard people say a lot, uh, obviously, um, that it's frustrating. It's frustrating when you go through trials and tribulations. It's frustrating when you don't know exactly the purpose and the reason. The challenges, the tough times, the difficult situations, you have health issues, the finances, relationship issues, uh, some kind of struggle in your life, uh, family issues. But when you look at things in a bigger perspective, instead of you know checking yourself, you need to check to see where we are spiritually. And the reason why I'm saying this is because uh, a lot of times people will come up to me, and even as a pastor and a friend, they will ask for my opinion on stuff, and I'll say, well, um, how's your relationship with Jesus? How, how are things going with you in your walk with God? You know, because if you're struggling, especially spiritually, if you don't have that relationship with Jesus yet, it's really difficult to see the purpose in things. Um, so if we know God's Word is 100% truth, we do our best to live it out, you know, are we just picking and choosing what we accept in God's Word, or are we accepting all of the Bible, all of God's Word? Because God specifically says, look, there's going to be trials and tribulations, but yeah, we're supposed to count all joy. It's a testing of our faith, and our perseverance, our patience. So, if there's one Bible verse that people tend to look at, it's one of the most quoted verses if you, if you, you know, web search it or... You know, if you do an engine search, search on the top Bible verse, this is always like 1, 2, or 3. And it's Romans 8, 28. And we know all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to His purpose. Simply stated, what it's saying is God works all things together for good, both His good and our good, as God is glorified when we seek His will and His purpose in all things. And through that, God's people will benefit. Right? So let me give you some context on that. In Romans 8, 1 through 18, Paul is talking to, he's talking to believers, he's talking to followers of Christ. And he's comparing people that are living kind of a selfish life, a selfish pursuits. They're, they're after the flesh, it's whatever feels good. They're kind of moving along with culture, what culture thinks is right or wrong. And they're going after these fleshly things, right? And he's saying, well, if you want that kind of life, you're going to struggle. And he compares that life with a life that's spent seeking after the will of God. 
seeking after a relationship with Christ, led by the Holy Spirit, to please God and, and not ourselves. And Paul is, through 1 through 18, he's making this very specific. He's saying, look, if, if, we, if, if we seek God first, if, if the whole plan is to know God deeper and deeper every day, if we're really struggling every day against all the things that the world's throwing at us, and just focusing on Christ, he says, you're going to see life in a whole different perspective. Your whole worldview is going to be completely different than if you're living a life of the flesh, of the world, as opposed to living a life of the Spirit. And we even see that in one of my favorite verses, Matthew 6.33. See, Paul is saying, God is sovereign. He's in control. He's all-knowing. He's all-wise. He's all-powerful. He's the best. And he sees what we do not. And that's a big one. Because when we don't see everything, we don't get all the answers, and we don't understand everything that we're going through, we can struggle with that. But if we realize, if we realize that it's all about God's will and not ours, then we start to see His plan and His purpose for us. Which is, like I say all the time, it's way better than anything we could possibly come up with for ourselves. I mean, you don't have to raise your hands, but if you want to, go ahead. But how many of Try it your way and totally mess stuff up. Okay, cool. Right? And then, how many times have you said to yourself, I wish I hadn't done that. That's right. Now, if I only had known then what I know now. You know, if I could go back in time. You know, if, that's a song. If I could turn back time. Share, sure, right? Okay. <laughs> Lord, I pray for Cher right now. <laughs> and she was come to know you, Lord, but you want me to go, it's all about Jesus. Okay. But, but we, we go through life and we can't live in those regrets, yet, yet we can look back on that and we can say, wow, there was something going on back then. There is something that I see now that I didn't see then. That's right. See, because then we see things that God has for us and the goodness of God in any situation we may have gone through or what we're going through now. See, as a pastor, once again, I can say that, you know, I talk to people a lot and they'll always ask me, you know, about a situation they're going through. And I, I don't have all the answers. I know God does, so I just keep referring back to the Word of God. But it's always difficult to get some of these questions um, because sometimes the answers that I give may not be the ones that people really want to hear. They want to hear the whys and the outcomes and and it's difficult because at times I have to mention what the Word says, and sometimes it's about not knowing the answer. It's about trusting. Yes. Right. It's about patience and waiting to see the goodness of God that's going to come out of these certain situations. But at the same time, I, I also say, well, how's your prayer life? You know, if, if you're looking to see the goodness in a situation, how's your relationship with Jesus? Are you holding any offense? Are you holding any unforgiveness towards someone? Uh, are you struggling with something you shouldn't be struggling with right now? Or are you at the very least trying to overcome certain things? And those are big questions. And the two big questions are, you know, do you believe and place your faith in the gospel? Is, is, is it about Jesus for you? Because that second question is, do you believe the word of God is absolute truth? Because it's very difficult to see to God be good in a situation, first of all, if someone doesn't know Christ, and the second is if they're struggling with something that's getting in the way of this godly vision, of this something that God wants to reveal to you. And there's so many things that God has wanted to reveal in my life, and I'm speaking, and I always say, hey, look, I'm speaking from experience. I'm telling you, there's a lot of things God wanted to do in my life that I, I just, I had walls up and where I had blinders on to the goodness of God, it wouldn't be revealed to me until I was ready for it. Because if we truly love God and called to live according to His Word and His loving purpose, and it's not about our worldly ways and all our selfish purpose, then we can start to see the goodness of God that Romans 8.28 is talking about. See, I, I was telling somebody earlier, because this verse is really a promise, but at the same time, it's a challenge. Yes. It's a challenge. And we know that all things work together for good. That's the part everybody always says. Right? Hey, look, all things are going to work together for good. Just be calm. Well, wait. 
But it's to those who love God. To those who are the called according to His purpose. How many times have you had somebody who didn't have a relationship with Christ, God, say to you, well, if God's so good and God's so great and loves us all, why does it all these bad things happen? Because they can't see the godly good. They can't see that, first of all, it's pretty much our fault for the whole world messed up anyway. We broke our relationship with God and it took Christ on that cross to fix it and reconcile. So these questions that I have. So Romans 8, 18 to 39, the Apostle Paul is telling the followers of Christ, the believers, listen, this is when you need to hang on to hope, to trust God's plans, what he promises us during the times we're not too happy with physically, emotionally, or mentally, but if we understand that we are to love God, follow his Holy Spirit, and understand the sacrifice of Jesus, then we as God's children, the believers, we have an assurance. We have a promise that all things will work together for good. So if we flip that around a little bit, in verse 18, Paul says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed to us. Amen. Now, there's a lot of things I don't understand. I, I don't get the whys and the outcomes and things like that. But when I start to like give in a little bit to my frustrations, I'll read this. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed to us. So I know, as an assurance, no matter what we go through, no matter the challenges and struggles physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, that that tells me that all the crud we go through now doesn't even compare to what God has for each one of us who love Him and believe in the Bible, believe in the Gospel, believe Jesus is Lord. Paul says sometimes God leads His children through suffering before we reach His glory. See, the whole created universe suffers with the consequences of what we did, what we humans messed up on. But that process is only temporary because God has provided the deliverance for each one of us. And it's not that we're just going to sit back and just let things happen. We're still called to action. Our faith without deeds without action is dead. We're still to be a mobile Christian family. We're supposed to fight against injustice. We're supposed to fight to, to overcome the temptations. We're supposed to stand up for the godly good. We're supposed to believe in the Bible from the first word to the last word. Put into action. We're still to love our enemies. Yes. We're still to go out there and forgive people and love people yes. and boldly pro 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 proclaim the gospel. We're to be out there standing up for the truth of God's word. Amen. And then he says again, and we know that all things work the other for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Now, what is the two purposes of God's calling? Okay? The first purpose is, it's for our godly good, right? And number two is, His glory. His. 2 Thessalonians 2, 13, 14. I'll read that again. 2 Thessalonians 2, 13, 14. And 1 Peter 2 through 9 say that God's calling on us is for His godly good and His glory. And Philippians 2, 13, Paul says... It is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. See, a lot of times we're searching for what's good for us. And we think because it's good for us, somehow it pleases God. Well, all the things that we think are good for us may not be necessarily good for God and for His purpose. And that's just the truth at times we have to realize. If we know that we love God and call according to His purpose, then we have to trust in things that we don't necessarily agree with at the time. That's right. I may not understand everything, but if I trust God, I know it's going to work out for His glory and for His godly good. Yeah. See, then we can trust that not the thing that we're going through, but we can trust in what God has called us to do in our life. The simplest way to put it is, I don't know all the answers, but God, I trust you. I don't get it, but you're sovereign. God is constantly working the hearts and in the lives of people that make a commitment to Him and love Him and know that they're called for His purpose. And we're saying that this morning, Jesus in the garden is, God, if it's possible, Father, let this pass from me, but not my will, Your will. The struggles that we go through at times 
we have to realize, even though it's difficult, there is a godly purpose to it. Even when we don't get it. I'm going to give you a couple examples. I'm going to shift gears slightly in this message. But so this September will be 20 years that Debbie's been struggling with this uh, neurological disease. And um, at times when I'm really frustrated about it, it's difficult to see godly good that comes from it. But it is revealed at times. And um, early on, like 18 years ago, like maybe a couple years in this journey, I'm at work and um, everybody at my job knew kind of what we were going through. And, and, and um, so I have this meeting with this uh, co-worker of mine and uh, just like a, like a review. And um, we start off by, hey, how was your weekend? How are you? You're fine. And uh, she was, I'm fine. She was, uh, I ran uh, a marathon. I ran like only my second marathon. I go, great. And I go, how'd you do? She goes, well, I finished, but I struggled at the end. I was really tired. It was a full marathon. And she said, you know, I, I was getting towards, I had like maybe a mile left. And I was just about to quit. My feet were just burning. It's like, you know, I just, I just, I was tired. She goes, then I remembered your wife. And that, you know, how her feet feel and she's not walking and stuff. And I, I thought, well, wait a minute. If, if, if my feet are working and they may be burning a bit, but, and I've seen what she does to get up and try to walk around at the time she was on canes, she's like, then I'm going to finish this marathon. And it's like, that was really inspiring because it was this godly good that came out of a struggle. And there's dozens of examples like that. But listen, the promise that God works all things together for good does not mean that we will not go through tough times and we're not going to have struggles and real deep trials and tribulations. Or that anything that happens will always be a good moment in our life. We're going to have moments that are really difficult. But yet God is able to work them together for good. See, He sees this big picture. And He has this massive plan. So after all that, let me tell you a story about the last couple of weeks. Um, I'll give you a bit of a testimony and a story about this whole heart procedure came out. Um, I need to kind of backtrack a bit. Um, when, I was, when I was in the hospital, um, I'd gone into the ER with my daughter, um, cardiologist that I see, he was there on call. And uh, so he comes in and says, oh, you're going through this, going through that give you the angiogram. If I see something, we're just going to take care of it at that moment. I said, great. Um, so, we did a couple of stents. I'm in the hospital for the night. And that was tough because I wasn't able to move. They said, if anybody's ever had this done, you can't move for like 12 hours. You're supposed to be perfectly flat. You don't move. You don't do anything. So I'm just like in this bed. And um, there was nurses. There were so many nurses all around me and stuff. And um, and, you know, some of them talked, some of them didn't. They were just... And the one that went, okay, I'm going to take your blood again. One, two, three, poke. And she jabbed me. <laughs> as big as bruise. Everybody else was like, you're going to feel a small little pinch. <laughs> they slid the needle in. But for some reason, a little nice, some nurse goes, okay, one, two, three, poke, boom. And I went, ow, oh, it's the first time it's ever happened. <laughs> so all these nurses were coming around me, but <laughs> not that nurse. But another nurse um, comes in. Middle of the night. If anybody knows, they wake you up to give you a sleeping pill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they always do that. So, um, but I'm there, and you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling well, really. And uh, this nurse comes up to me, and she says, uh, "So I heard you're a pastor." <laughs> and I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> "Yeah." But um, she she says, um, you know. Um, so do you believe that all things work together for good? Do you really think that good things happen in bad situations? And it's like, I don't know, midnight? <laughs> you know, I've got like tubes hanging in me. You know, I'm in this little gown, you know. And, <laughs> and you know, my hair's all crazy. And, you know, and there's a, like a bedpan on the side. <laughs> and I'm like, and I feel like a drool coming out. And you know, black and blue all over. And this, this, this nurse says, that's so you, you're a passive. Like, yeah, you know. And so she goes, well, what do you think? Do you really think that, you know, there's good tough situation? And I said, um, 
you know, do you have time to answer that question? But yeah, we get off to like 6 a.m. and okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I'm sitting there, my back hurts, I'm on pain pills and medication and stuff, and she asked me a deep question like that, but I kind of like looked up at her and go, yeah, I'll answer the question. I said, I can only tell you about how God's Word is active and how it's active in my life. So I said, if you got a little while, I'll, I'll give you my answer. So I said to her, um, I went, in 2018, she goes, oh, <laughs> in 2018, um, it was a tough year. I said in June of 2018, everything was going really great. You know, we built this, you know, uh, we had three acres in paradise and we built this uh, playground for the future grandkids. It's really great. But, and um, my dad dies. <coughs> and um, we never saw it coming. Never saw it coming. We're in his room, we're talking, I had done an event, I spoke for Billy Graham. <coughs> And I'd done a prayer event to Chico the night before. And I'm telling my dad about it. This is the story I'm telling her. So I'm telling you like I'm talking to her. And I said, you know, we're just talking to my dad's room. He's telling me, oh, I'm so proud of you. This is great. Oh, man, you guys are, this is amazing. I'm so proud. And then he says, I don't feel good. And he has a major heart attack. And he dies. And that was really difficult. And I said, at the time, I said, oh, God, not now. Not now. Things were so great. My daughter was going to have a baby. My other daughter was going to get married. We were just looking at this was going to be our best year ever. And I said, God, not now. Not now. Not now, God. But he left. At the time, I said, this is so horrible. And it was. But basically what happened was, because he died of a heart attack that we never saw coming, I decided to go to the doctor. I went like a month or two later. And every year I have physicals. Every year for 20 something years I've had physicals. And they've always told me, you're in such great shape. Everything looks great. Everything looks wonderful. You know, it's like you're 20 years younger and, and you know, you eat right, a healthy lifestyle. You've never eaten, you know, drunk and, and you don't smoke. I've never smoked. I've never drank. I've never had alcohol. I've never been drunk. All these things. Never tried marijuana. Nothing. Nothing. Zip. Healthy lifestyle. And the doctor says, you know, you're looking great. I said, well, my dad just died of a heart attack. We never saw it coming. And then I started thinking, his mom and dad died of heart attacks. My mom's died at 38 of heart disease. Her father died like 69 of heart disease. And I'm like, can you give me like a body scan? And he goes, well, you don't need it. I go, I want to check my heart. And he says, well... I can give you this calcium test, it's kind of like a three-week test, we, we can do that, see in about a week. Take the test, come back in a week, and he looks at me and goes, I never thought by looking at you, but you have a heart problem. He goes, one of your arteries is really blocked, you may need a stent. I'm going to refer you to a cardiologist. I said, okay. Went to the cardiologist. I won't mention his name, <laughs> but for a couple of years he was testing me and I kept saying, I need a stent, and he wouldn't do it changed cardiologist, he retired, new guy comes along, and earlier this year, he goes, we have to do something about your heart. And I said, okay. So, um, with the things that were going on, I went to the hospital a couple weeks ago, and they fixed my heart, and I have one more stent probably to do, but you know, I was only, I was working on 50 to 70% of the blood flow I was supposed to have. The last few months, I've been saying, I'm Tired. My dad always told me the last few months before he was around, he said, I'm always tired. And I remembered that. So I'm telling this to the nurse, and um, I said, I will tell you that my dad passing away was one of the worst moments of my life, if not the worst moment of my life. But yet, yeah. through that, God, use that moment to tell me something, to reveal something to me, that I needed to go above and beyond what I was doing to take care of myself, to ensure that I had a nice, long life. 
Amen. And that I can get another, I've been telling people, another 40,000 miles or 40 years, whatever it comes first. You know? But I feel as if my dad somehow yeah. saved my life. Yeah. I wish he was still here. But if I trust God that his timing and the things that he's done and he's doing and what he has planned, that somehow out of that horrible thing came something good. That's right. Good for my kids, good for my wife, good for my friends, my family, the church, good for me. You know, I want to be around another 40 years or so. Amen? Amen. So I told this to the nurse. And, um, and I said, if God can use something like that to get me here, so I, asked, I, I told her, do you know why I'm here? I'm here because of a tragic situation. I'd opened up my eyes that God wanted to take care of me. Amen. And she says, okay. And um, kind of played with her a bit. Uh, she, was, she felt awkward, but um, if it was a seat, yeah. then I'm okay with that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So uh, if I am going to be here another 40 years or 40,000 miles, uh, <laughs> Or, or, or whenever we hear the trumpets and we're all out of here at the same time. A couple more months. <laughs> so I'm going to end with this. Romans 8, 31 to 39 reads this way. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? As God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave up for us all. Won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us when God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us the right standing with himself. Mm -hmm. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ died for us and was raised to life for us and is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Yes. Can anything separate us ever no. from God's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity? or if we're persecuted, or if we're hungry, or destitute, or if we're in danger, or threatened with death. As the scripture says, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Amen. Isn't that a great way to end it? And he says... I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life nor angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And that means that no matter what happens in life, if we love God 100% with all that we have, if we live to pursue His purpose and not our own, and we do all that we can do to strive to live for His will, then all things will work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. That's a promise. Amen? Give us some praise.